every day till we get to heaven somebody will discover something new about god and in that discovery will come another manifestation once upon a time there was an apostle who carried a mantle of fire who spoke the counsel of jehovah with confirmation accuracy and precision and who devastated the works of satan apostle king omudu unveiling truth we have been searching what we call the pillars of dominion now if you read genesis chapter 1 verses 26 27 and 28 that's where the text for this sermon series came from most of you i think are aware when god created man what we call the dominion mandate which is the right to govern the right to rule over situation and circumstances and of course over creation the created world God did not create this world for Satan and his demons to run them. I'll say that again. The Lord did not create this world for Satan and his demons to run them. Psalms chapter 8, the Bible told us that the earth he gave to the sons of men. Who did he give it to? The sons of men. He didn't create it so that Satan can run rampage, so that Satan can govern it. That's not what, that's not the original intent. Every influence that the enemy got over the world, which he's still using till now, and he will continue to use until the redemption of all things, that influence came just because there was a dominion failure. What did I call it? Dominion failure. That right, that authority that God gave to the man not to any other created being it was man he gave it to it was man that was supposed to govern be in charge of the earth because he made the earth for his ultimate purpose he created the world to give him pleasure i told you in the course of this sermon series i don't know which of the days that if creation is in the order that god intended Everything in creation serves only the purpose of God. It doesn't matter how mundane or trivial those things may come through to us. I think it was one of those days I was telling you that even the raging of the sea was not to, supposed to make boats capsize. The raging of the, of the waters, the big waters, the ocean and the seas and the rivers is not to make boats sink. The original intent is so that they can join in the symphony of the praise of God that is supposed to be oozing out of creation. It was supposed to be a harmony. The trees of the field clapping their hands when the wind blows on them it was supposed to be part of the choir, the eternal choir that brings praise to Almighty God. So when the sea billows, it's not supposed to push man out of his place. It was originally intended to contribute in harmony to the eternal song of the praise of Yahweh Adonai. And he put man in charge to make sure that balance is sustained. Who is hearing me so far? To make sure the sea never overflows its bounds. To make sure that the trees of the field will know their place, serve his purpose. But Adam had what I call the dominion failure. Instead of being in charge, something else out of creation came over him and sat over him. And he, began, he became subservient to something that he was supposed to rule over. That's dominion failure. When Satan met Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and there was that exchange, that was what happened. And so the mandate that was given to him to take charge, bring into under control and bring under uh, the, 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 the purposes of God was lost. But thank God for Jesus. Jesus did not lose to Satan. And because Jesus did not lose to Satan, now you have the victory that you can now live over all the works of Satan. Hallelujah. Satan doesn't have to be in your business all the time. The dominion mandate is 
That consciousness that will make you excuse the devil. If he's playing ignorance, if he's claiming he's not aware that he is no longer in charge and he doesn't govern you. He may have influence here and there, but he's not over the child of God. The Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Present continuous. There will never be a time where the child of God is supposed to be a loser. Hallelujah. He's in a perpetual state of winning. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hand and say, I'm in a perpetual state of winning. Morning, noon, and night, I'm in a perpetual state of winning. It doesn't matter what happens, I'm in a perpetual state of winning. The Bible says, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in every place and he makes manifest the savor of his knowledge by us. That's who we are. That is our redeemed position. Hallelujah. The man in Christ, the Bible says, he is more than a conqueror. Now, so the dominion was restored to the one, like the choir said, I have the life of God in them. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. That is the recovery of the dominion mandate. The devil did not defeat Jesus the way he defeated Adam in the garden. He came after Adam. Adam fell to the devil's tricks. He came after Jesus. Jesus defeated him until the Bible said, and the devil lived him. And he handed back the dominion to us. We are supposed to walk in that place that Adam fell out of. But if you are not careful, certain concepts in scriptures remain elusive and just hypothetical. As though they are just supposed to exist in some, you know, high sounding religious or Christian philosophies. But the truth of the matter is that the dominion that God gave to man was a practical one. It was an everyday influence over creation and over situation. Now, the heart of this message is to be able to bring us to the place to appreciate uh, this system and how we can participate intentionally so that the purpose of God or the purposes of God will not suffer failure in our lives. And whenever I talk about the purpose of God, I like to remind God's people that you are the number one in that agenda. You are an embodiment of that purpose. You were made for God's purpose. Every time your potential is frustrated. Every time God's plan for your life is frustrated. What that situation was calling for was the exercise of dominion. Every time the devil tried to to work against God's interests and purposes for your life. It is a summon that you deploy your dominion mandate. That right to rule and to govern creation. So that nothing contrary ever succeeds or prevails over what God intended and orchestrated you into. In your being born into this world. And of course being born again into the kingdom of God. If you are hearing me so far, say I hear. So dominion is practical. Situations arose in the days of Jesus that he demonstrated these dominion rights. The day you saw him spoke to death, a 12-year-old girl died and was going to be buried until Jesus showed up. And after Jesus showed up, he spoke to death. Death released that girl instantly and she lived. Death confronted the man who understood his dominion rights and death did not prevail. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ as you walk in this consciousness, whether for yourself or for those you love and care about, death will not prevail in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our dominion extend over death. It extend over everything about life. The Bible says concerning us, he said, all things are yours. And before you get confused to say, oh, maybe he's talking about some spiritual things or things I do not understand. If you read that scripture, he said the world, things present, things to come, visible things, invisible things, all are yours. Hallelujah. That's right. Am I making sense here? That's right. And it's important that we know how to work this thing. Now, what I've been saying in the course of this sermon presentation is that Jesus demonstrated for us 
I believe that that's one of the reasons he became man. He was okay being God and he can remain that way forever. But amongst the reasons why he became man and walked through this process on this holy week is so that he can show us by example. And Jesus truly demonstrated what it means for the child of God to have dominion. Lift your right hand and say, I have dominion. And so out of his life and how he exercised this divine reality, we began to talk about certain basic underlining principles that can help us on a daily basis activate this divine reality that can supplant and subdue all the nonsense that the devil is trying to bring against humanity and practically rule in this world. Hallelujah. I've talked about a couple of them. If you have not been here, you have not heard the messages yet. They are on Facebook. They are, and they should be on YouTube as well. You can just look for these messages, these dominion messages and listen to them again. I began by letting us know what I call pillars. Number one, I talked about the eternal life as a pillar, our being born again, having the life of God in us is one of the basis to exercise our dominion right. I call it eternal life. The Bible calls it Zoe life, the God kind of life in a mortal body. Gives that mortal body the authority and the legitimacy to act on behalf of God and to rule and govern situations and creation. That life of God. The same way God can govern, he has given his sons and daughters the life that he has that gives him the right to govern. So the fact that you are born again automatically presupposes that you qualify to walk in dominion. So the next time they see rages, you can say like Jesus, peace be still and there should be some response. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Are you listening to me? The second thing I said, we took all this from the life of Jesus is the Rema word or the spoken word. And Jesus used it. He taught us to use it. And you should use it. As a matter of fact, one of the ways we exercise this right over nature, over creation, and over the circumstances of our lives is when we speak the word of God. When you understand the revelation behind speaking the word of God, you will discover that creation does not know the difference. When God say, let there be, and a child of God filled with the Holy Ghost say, let there be, creation does not know who said what. It's under obligation to honor the word of God when it is spoken. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Creation is under obligation. And one of the ways we demonstrate this power is by speaking the word of God, the rhema of God. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Number 4 or 3 or whatever. I spoke about faith as one of the pillars of our dominion and I wish you took your time to listen to last Sunday's first and second service message. This will be a lot clearer. Number four, I spoke about this morning wisdom or the wisdom of God. I tried to break down what that is and for those who are not here, one of the scriptures, I will tell you the place of wisdom in the agenda of God in the New Testament, is sorry, Ephesians chapter 3. If you look at verses 10 all the way, to, I think we should read it. I didn't read it in the first service, so let's read it now. Ephesians 3, Ephesians chapter 3. Now I'll read from verse 10. Uh, no, let me see where it's more convenient, where it's always better. Okay, let me read verse 9 and 10 all right he said and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which which from the beginning of the world had been hid in god who created all things by jesus christ verse 10 to the intent somebody say to the intent that's the purpose now that now somebody say now so we are in that time we're in that time one of the scepters of our dominion is revealed in this text that now unto the principalities 
and powers in heavenly places. These are the governing powers and structures of Satan. The Bible said there was a hidden mystery that now, and that is the time is now, that unto the principalities and the powers in heavenly places might be known by who? The church. So the person that will be demonstrating this is not God himself, but his church. And the church is not this building. The church is the ecclesia, the called out one, you and I. We are supposed to teach principalities and powers something. Unto the, to the intent and now unto the principality and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church. What? The manifold wisdom of God. God's end time agenda of dominion rests heavily on his wisdom. So wisdom is one of the scepters of our dominion. The amplified translation of verse 10, the amplified translation of the same scripture of verse 10, he said the purpose is, where you read to the intent, you see, amplified just breaks it down for you. He said the purpose is that through the church, somebody said through the church, that is you and I now, the complicated many-sided wisdom of God in all of his infinite variety and innumerable aspects might now be made known to the angelic rulers and authority, principalities and powers in the heavenly sphere. One of the ways we bring those structures of Satan to ruin is by the demonstration of the wisdom of God at work in our lives. And thank God for salvation. Because salvation pre-qualifies you to be a carrier of the wisdom of God. If you say, I have the wisdom of God in me, you are actually aligning with what God has already done for you. Hallelujah. When you read Ephesians, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, you will see why I say that there, Christ is the wisdom and the power of God and that Christ is in you. Put your hand on your belly, say, Christ is in me. Oh, you didn't say it well, like you don't believe what I'm saying. Say, Christ is in me. Yes. Hallelujah. And now in the book of Colossians chapter 2, if you read verse 3, the Bible says, in Christ is hid all the treasures of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. And that Christ is inside of you. One more time, touch yourself. Say, I have the wisdom of God in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you must learn to say that all the time. Let me take you to my final point this morning. Psalms chapter, which chapter now? 110, I think. Psalms chapter 110. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody following me so far? As I'm following Jesus? I say anybody following me so far? All right, so let me show you the pillar of power. Power is the final pillar I want to show you in this presentation. That's not all that there is to it, but that's much I have the time for in this sermon series. Look at this from verse 1. Of course, this is a messianic psalm which means that whatever is being discussed here is jesus hallelujah now no come church i say hallelujah Amen. are we together all right so everything that is being discussed here is jesus okay it's not some old testament prophet no it's a messianic psalm this is prophecy okay it's about the lord look at verses one two and three let's read it quickly one to go the lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies. I pray you will not be seeing your neighbor in this write-up. The person you quarreled over water this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have more important enemy than any human being. Who understand what I'm saying now? You know, in Africa, we can easily, everybody's our enemy. Amen. And the pulpit is not helping matters. We are suspecting everybody. It's okay to be suspicious. It's fine. But the truth of the matter is that if you major on the minor, the major will deal with you while you are focusing on the minor. Who heard what I just said? If chicken is pursuing you and lions are pursuing you, In that analogy, every human enemy is just chicken. The real enemy is Satan. And all of his nonsense works. 
that he wants to use to block you, stop you. The devil is a liar. I want you to see that enemy. See sickness there. See that headache that refused to answer to medication. See, are you with me still? See that delay that refused to yield. No matter how much you labor, see it there. And not some neighbor that refused to give you a bucket to go and bath. And then you go and start praying. All my enemies in this compound, if I be a child of God, die by fire. Please, major on major, leave minor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't go in your neighborhood and be singing, all my enemies in this house, die by fire. You are talking to, please, please. There are more serious issues. Are you with me? That thing that does not want anybody to grow in your family, that's a real enemy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Anyways, the Lord said to my Lord, sit down my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. This is talking about dominion. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength. Thank you, Jesus. Out of Zion. Rule thou. Where? In the midst of hostility. In the midst of contrary wind. You are trying to go over to the other side. And an evil wind arises. Rule thou. Somebody say I rule. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something good is coming your way. And some which somewhere is manipulating things to make sure it doesn't get to you. Rule thou. And, um, oh my God. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Rule thou. Praise God. Rule thou in the midst of your enemies. Verse 3. Continue the same thing. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. This is talking about the power era of the church. When Messiah will usher in the power era of the church. It began with him, of course. He was the one that came in the power of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 and went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him but he did it did not end with him are you hearing what I'm saying he demonstrated what his power can do so that he can bring us to the place in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. He demonstrated, he lived it so that he can bring you into it. Listen, child of God, the power era of the church is the era of the dominion of the church. And guess what? From the day of Pentecost until the rapture of the church, that dispensation is now in place. We are in the power era of the church and every born again believer filled with the spirit of Christ is at liberty to exercise this power and bring the enemies of Zion under subjection. That is called dominion. One of the scepters of our dominion is the power of God. Somebody shout the power of God. So you got born again filled with the Holy Spirit so that you can become a carrier of that power and by extension exercise that dominion right and responsibility. One more time, say, tell yourself, I have dominion because I have the power of God. You didn't say it's strong enough. Say it one more time. Say it again. I have dominion because I've got the power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do I have any born again Christian in this house? Do I have anybody filled with the Holy Spirit in this house? Now tell yourself I have the power. Now that one, one of the main purposes of that power in your life or in you is for you to exercise dominion over the 
enemies of the purposes of God. And the enemies of the purposes of God may just be those enemies that are confronting you right now. That sickness that does not want you to maximize your life. When you try to rise, it rises and subdues you and puts you in a state of fear. That is the enemy you are supposed to rule over. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That situation that does not want you to give expression to the possibilities of God in you, to the realities of the life of God in you. That is the enemy you are supposed to rule over. In the first service, I told them, some Christians are suffering from frustrated potential. When you look at your life, you can always tell that you are better than where you are right now. If you were allowed to give full expression, if nothing is blocking and hindering, you will manifest in such a way that even you will not recognize yourself. But there is what I call frustrated potential. You have what it takes, but you are not taking what it has. Frustrated potential. That's the work of the enemy. A king should be a king, not a servant. Who heard what I just said now? I've seen an evil under the sun. An error that proceeded from the ruler. Who remembered that scripture in Ecclesiastes? He said, I saw servants upon horses. Servants where? It's an abnormally. That's why I called it an error. And I saw princes on foot. In the name of Jesus Christ, get back to where you are, you are gifted to go. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will not look rich and be broke all your life. Ele. Have you ever seen those, those, that kind of conflict? He looks rich, but he's broke. Frustrated potential. <laughs> he's intelligent, but jobless. Gifted, but wasting. Frustrated potential. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who is hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But power is a scepter of dominion. Don't carry the power of God and die in the hands of the enemy. Rule thou. Rule thou. Rule thou. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rule. Be in charge. Hallelujah. In the midst of the enemies, you are still manifesting greatness. That's what we are called to do. That's why the Bible says we are the light of the world. Darkness may cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but there's a light on you that cannot be quenched. For the Bible says the light shineth in darkness and the, and the darkness, what? Comprehends it not. I don't care what is going on around. Trust me if you will believe the word of God. Even in the midst of downtime, you will still be rising. You will still be shining. Woo, they don't believe. I say even in down times, you'll still be rising and you'll still be shining. Yeah. Let me hear that your amen like thunder. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. You know why? You've got the power. When Jesus returned with that power, his generation, his world changed their, 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 their view of him. The Bible says Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. And his fame spread abroad. He stopped living and existing in silence. Something came out of his life that shook the world around him. Are there people, were there people that hated him that time? It doesn't matter. Are there people around that may want to oppose you? It doesn't matter. When power shows up, it brings the people under uh, uh, into alignment to what God intends for your life. I have the power. Don't just speak in tongues and die and die in frustration. That power is supposed to be deployed. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Lift your hands. Say to yourself, I have the power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 3, Paul, not Paul now, what was the guy, the other guy? Peter. Peter showed us how to put this power into operation. Because you have to put this power into work if you are going to have dominion. In Acts chapter 3, if you read the scripture, maybe we should just read it. I think I still have the time to read that. Acts chapter 3. Beginning at verse 1. He said, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, 
was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them then Peter said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength this was a situation that life and nature was working against the design of God this is where dominion is needed a man born with potential was incapacitated by something that went wrong from his mother's womb the Bible says he was born lame but I want you to know that the Bible says in the beginning it was not so that is not the design the fact that he was born that way does not mean he was designed that way some people's battle did not start after they were born it began before they were born this is an example of such a man the devil began to frustrate his potential even before he entered this world and that's one reality we cannot run away from it is possible to be born fighting it is possible the original design did not capture a crippled man that was not in the design in the beginning it wasn't so whatever happened that made this man to be born crippled happened after the design an enemy has done this the bible says but the man was born that way so that was a situation that was going contrary to the design of god and dominion say bring it under control I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Every situation of your life that is acting contrary to divine design, we bring them under control right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. We bring them under control right now. Are you aware that it is the design of God for you to live in divine health? Like you are physically well, all the time healthy. Who knows as the design? That's what the Bible says. Say, beloved, I wish above all things that you be in health, that you prosper, sorry, and be in health even as your soul prospers. That's the design. Sickness is contrary to the design. And dominion say, check out the sickness. And so today in the name of Jesus, by dominion right, I check out every sickness out of any life that is being afflicted here. Right now in the name of Jesus. That's dominion. That's dominion. That's dominion. And Peter went out, met a contrary situation. This one was not even his problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? But he knew how to represent God. He knew how to stand for God. Lift your right hand and say, I will stand for God. I will stand for God. That's what you are. You are an ambassador. You are supposed to represent your king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in this split second, Peter demonstrated what every believer should be demonstrating. It may not be in a similar situation, but why not if not? But what about your business? What about your family? What about your career? What about your children? What about those things that are trying to shoot, pop up where you know that this is not the will of God? What about those? Will you watch them continue to happen? until you are you are frustrated out of life no use your dominion rights peter will not watch it pass by he walked straight to the man as soon as the man spoke to them give me something peter walked to him and said look on us and in three simple steps peter showed us how to deploy this power and cause change in our world the number one step is to be filled with the spirit all the time in the statement that peter made peter knew that he was filled with the spirit he knew that he was filled with power look at your neighbor tell them be filled with the spirit 
you will not wake them up if you don't say it into their ears. Say, be filled with the Spirit. Help your neighbor stay awake. Tell them, be filled with the Spirit. When he said, such as I have. Remember the guy just came out from the upper room. Remember that? On the day of Pentecost, the guy just got filled with the Holy Ghost. He was conscious of that. He knew that he had something. So he could boldly say, I have it. Tell your neighbor I have it. Now help me have the have it what? I have the power of God in me. Hallelujah. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Some of you need to pay me for this shouting because I'm helping you to stay awake. Not like I really want to shout. Amen. Pro <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor's eye. The one that is looking red like they are seeing vision. Tell them, set to pastor after service. Set to him, set to him. The man really helped you today. He really helped you. Your, your village people came, but he kept you awake. Hallelujah. One more time, say, I have the power. That power comes with the infilling of the spirit. Peter was conscious of the infilling. I have it. I have something. And that thing is enough to correct this error in your life. Get up. So number one is be filled with the Spirit. Be filled all the time. Don't just go around bragging. Be filled with the Spirit. Soak and be filled. Listen to the Word of God and be filled. Worship and be filled. Pray and be filled. Fast and be filled. Whatever you will do, be filled. So that you can have what to offer creation. Peter had something to offer. Let me ask your neighbor, what do you have to offer today? Let them answer you. I just hope nobody will say gossip. I have the power. <laughs> glory to God. I say glory to God. Number two that Peter revealed also that can release this power and cause the change that you need in the situation and circumstances of life is to sustain the consciousness of it. Do not just be filled with the spirit. You must deliberately sustain a consciousness of it. Do you know where the tragedy is? Some Christians are more conscious of the power of the enemy than they are conscious of the power of God in their lives. And that's the truth, unfortunately so. We walk around conscious of what the enemy can do. We are so aware. Some of us are so aware that we literally tiptoe through life. Ah, there's one powerful native doctor around there. So you tiptoe. Ah, there's one witch there. You tiptoe. We literally tiptoe through life. That's the consciousness of the power of the enemy. I pray you will lose that consciousness today. I'm telling you. Because you know, the, 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 let, me, let me give you what the, the, what the game says. The game says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do you know what that means? There can be no power greater than the power that is inside of you. There can never be. It doesn't matter how powerful whatever you think is powerful is out there. If you ever showed up, you are the most powerful among them. And now some Christians can't buy into this, into this truth. Because they believe that some other guys may be more powerful than the Holy Ghost that I have. How can it be? If they are that powerful, what have they created? Show me the universe they created. Show me the, 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 the planets they created. Show me the sun and the moon they created. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Show me. If you believe they are that powerful, show me the world that they have made. But I can show you the world that the power of God has made. So who is more powerful? And when Jesus came, he said that power now lives in you. I have the power of God in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Only two people are saying that. It's okay, but those two of us will walk in dominion. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Wake up and say it so that, that your uncle pursuing everybody, your family can go to rest. Hallelujah. I am full of power, the prophet says. Sustain the consciousness of it. Do not be more aware of the enemy's ability than you are aware of the ability of God in you. Do not. It's a mistake. It puts you at disadvantage. 
puts you at disadvantage. Many of us, we, we, we literally pay homage to the ability of the enemy. Literally pay homage. Hey, be careful, oh, in this place. Ah, everybody is wicked, everybody is bad. And so what? And so what? We are not saying they are not wicked. We are not saying they are not bad. But don't you understand that these things have grade and have levels? Praise the Lord. Does it make sense so far? Some of you can't remember when last you went to your village. Why? Because there's a strong man, strong woman over there. The moment you show up, something bad happens. Come on. Come on. You should show up and they are hurrying you to leave. Because your presence is spoiling too many things for them. Not because you went to fight them. No. Just your presence is bad enough. It's a terror enough. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Why? Because of what you carry. Because of what is inside of you. The greater one lives inside of you. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? People should submit your name to a native doctor and then come back and apologize to you. Hello. Who heard what I said now? People should report you to altars and shrines and then later come back to apologize. I'm telling you what has happened before. Somebody submitted one of our sister's name here to a shrine and came back to apologize because affliction that came on him, the shrine told him, go and apologize to her. Who heard what I said? Real life story here. Go and apologize to her because if you don't, you will just die. And one day they brought a, a, a half dead human being. I'm sorry, this was what I did. The shrine said, I should come and apologize to you. Of course. Tell your neighbor, of course. The last time you ran from any demonic power should be the last time forever. Amen. Greater is he that is in you. But you must sustain the consciousness of it. The difference between you and Peter is not baptism of the Holy Spirit. You're already baptized in the Holy Spirit. The difference between you and Peter is consciousness. He sustained the consciousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You understand the two steps? Make sure you are filled with the Spirit. And that is an ongoing lifestyle. That is your walk with God. Number two, sustain the consciousness of power. Not just uh, power. Somebody say power. I don't know why the devil, see, look, the devil plays mind games. If the truth be told, there are some people listening to me today here. You are more conscious of the power of the enemy than you are conscious of the power of God. It shows in the way you talk about certain people. It shows in the way you pack well when certain people are, are moving or certain things are happening. It shows in the way you organize and just make sure nobody notices you. You sneak into your village in the night and sneak out by 5 a.m. You don't greet anybody in case you, in your greeting them, they harm you. Hey! Come on. Hallelujah. I have not said be careless, I just say be conscious. Be conscious. I shouldn't tiptoe for the devil. Lion doesn't tiptoe for pussycat. Why are you tiptoeing for the devil? You are scared, you are running, you are, you are hiding, literally hiding. Literally hiding. And then you, you, you try to validate it by your experience instead of the word of God. You say, you see, that my, that my other cousin, that's what happened. Oh, you see, even me, I dreamt that day, the man was chasing me with machete. If you dream, the man was chasing me with machete. I command you to go back and dream again. This time, make sure you have machete and gun. And chase the living daylight out of that devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Chase me in the dream, I will chase you back. For what? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a consciousness. You must sustain it. If you don't sustain it, it doesn't work. It's not active. It's like an umbrella. You can possess one. It doesn't necessarily protect you until you open it. This is how we open the power. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, open it. You are shaking hands with people. Your hand is trembling. In case they have something that hurt you. What? You should shake hands with them and what they have should spoil. Why are you like this? I'm talking to you. You are acting like I'm not talking to you. You should shake them and what they have should spoil. If you know how protected you are, you stop giving the devil so much glory like that. If you know how protected you are, if you know how defended you are, 
When you are in their midst, you are not the one at risk. They are the ones at risk. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I remember the story. I won't mention the location because it's a story around here. Okay? A particular traditional ruler. Hmm? I, I once had something to do with a guy. You know, a, a land transaction. Now, his daughter and his, one of his wives. He, has, he had wives. He's late now. Wives. And one of his wives went and joined a Pentecostal church. They got baptized the Holy Spirit and they started praying. From that day, his relationship with them changed. And this was what the man was always saying. Every time this girl and this woman, her stepmother, will pray, the man will come out that day, there will be fight in the compound till the end of the day. That's how you go and bring down your stupid prayer and come and be spoil, spoiling something I will spend money and do. You come and spoil everything. And they didn't know, they were just new Christians. You understand what I'm saying? They just, they just knew. But they are new, small, small prayer. You hear what I'm saying? A strong man will come out and be complaining, your prayer is spoiling my things. If only you know what is at work in you. Then they'll just send to you from the village. They say that uh, you're about to die, so come and do this sacrifice. And you sneak from behind. Eh, you come to church on Wednesday, you take communion, then you sneak on Thursday. You send chicken so that you will not die. The day they got that chicken, they got you. In case you are not aware. I know the native doctors here will not like what I'm saying. Why are you laughing like native doctors don't go to church? <laughs> Hallelujah. I am full of power by the Holy Ghost. That's what the Bible says. Sustain the consciousness and lastly, command. Don't appeal, command. Don't beg, command. Command your business to move. Don't do like you are, you are begging. You are, no! Peter was in command. He said, such as I have given thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He didn't say if you believe. He didn't say if you want. He didn't say if you desire. He didn't say if you are tired. He said, rise up. That's a command. That's not a suggestion. That's the reason why when the man didn't understand the message, and the man was not getting up. Peter reached out. Because he was not playing with him. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Even if you don't command a cripple to walk, wouldn't you command your, your children to behave? Command your business to act up, act well. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Command your grades to improve. You can't be failing like that with so much power at your disposal. How can business be slow for a whole two months? You are just struggling and trying to make ends meet and cope with salaries. Tell your neighbor, make a decree. Command. You release the power of God by commanding creation. Commanding situation. Jesus looked at the raging sea and he said, peace. Be still. He didn't say if the sea wants. He didn't say if the demon that is moving the sea wants. It was a command. And the Bible said there was a great calm. Because a man of power spoke. The Bible said where the word of a king is. There is what? Talk to me now. There is what? I cannot fail. That's a decree. That's a word of power. When you said that even in the midst of failure, you just alter the dynamics. You just rebalance power. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You just rebalance things. Stop keeping quiet with so much energy at work on your inside. You speak in tongues for hours only for you to come out and be talking about Nigerian problem. After speaking in tongues for hours, you are a part of the problem. You speak in tongues for five hours, then you come back the way this is going. I don't even know who voted this Buhari self. It's not Buhari, it's Tinubu now. You are still, you are still confused. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's not being in command. Amen. 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 
Making sense? Are you sure? You see, I see Christians, especially in our country, you know, we pray a lot here. Hallelujah. And that's a good thing. Unfortunately, after we have prayed, we don't, the, the other support systems are not there. How can you pray for five hours, six hours, seven hours, ten hours, and you come out confessing negatives? All that is coming out of your mouth is acknowledging what the devil is doing. Instead of calling those things that be not as though not calling the things that be as though they are not. Oh. They are two different things. I have to teach you confession again. Because some people think that confession is calling things that be as though they are not. No, no, no. 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 It's two different things. And you, here you are. You join everybody else with creative power in your belly. You now join everybody else creating nonsense. This is our country. I don't even know where we are going, self. See now, dollar is one. This it will soon be five thousand. That's a child of God. I just finished praying five hours. Wasted the energy of the prayer because what you say does not align with the word of God. The Bible calls what you just said "I do word." Do you know the meaning of "I do word"? Everything that comes out of your mouth that does not agree with Scripture is an "I do word," and the Bible says, "For every "I do word," a man will stand judgment on the last day." "I do word." If you say, "I am sick." Because you are physically ill. In the natural, you told the truth. Am I correct? In the spiritual, you spoke an idle word. Choose side. Did you hear what I just said? Because in the spiritual, I said, let the weak say I am strong. It is a let the weak talk, tell the truth. Say I am strong. And they said, me, I'm a realist. The way things are going, I don't think we would be in this country for another five years. Me, I'm just believing God. I don't think I can make it again in Nigeria. If I can just get visa, even if it's Kotonou, I'm gone. And what they just did was to empower their lives into Kotonou. No matter how many visas they apply for, they will never get because they have chosen Kotonou already. And by the way, you don't even need visa to go to Kotonou. Just carry your passport and start driving. When you get to to Badagri, keep driving. When you get to Seme, just keep driving. Greet the custom people and you are abroad. I've gone like that one day before. We just kept driving. We, drive through, we drove through Badagri. We got to Seme, greeted custom. We kept going and we entered. And then because you want to sound, you know, understanding. I don't know the way things are going. He says, no, I don't know. Hey! What are you saying? Do you know who you are? Your father spoke the world into existence. He reached chapter 11 verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. He created a frame. Like somebody said the other day, one of our, pastors, our ministers here. Say he created a frame, then put himself inside. And you are there celebrating ugliness. The Nigerians that were saying Naira will soon hit 5,000 5, Naira. When Naira started falling now, none of them is saying anything again. Because some of us are here say it will not happen. They are not saying anything again. I know people that say Naira will hit 5,000. Well, it's, it's going back now. And in Jesus' name, it will continue to go back. Yeah. But not just that, a time will come that our currency will no longer depend on the dollar. Because our economy is going to be working. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Yes. We're going to be producing. We're going to be manufacturing. It doesn't matter how long it takes. This is where we stand. And I made up my mind. I will see a working Nigeria in my lifetime. Yes. Things don't run us. We run things. Yes. It's called dominion. Stand to your feet. Mete mokona, mete mokona, mete mokona, mete mokona, bazanji soroba, mete mokona, mete mokona, 
Bazanji kunyaba mete mokona mete moko mete mokona mete mokona mete moko mete mokona mete mokona mete mokona Bazanji soroba mete mokona mete mokona Bazanji kunyaba mete mokona mete mokona mete mokona mete mokona mete mokona for you even before you showed up he made room for you even before you came the lord is your helper what can men do to you that you are so afraid of men the lord is your helper why are you afraid that you are going to be put to shame believers are having prayer failure is because of the lack of understanding there's a religious mindset or view that prayer is always asking God to do something but that's not true even the word ask in the Bible sometimes just simply means to demand is not request Many other times, we don't put our dominion scepter to work. When, when God, what God is expecting us to just rebuke, we're asking God to do something. Jesus said, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed. He didn't say you will call on me and I will come and I will now move the mountain. So you have Christians praying, oh Lord, let every mountain before me collapse, move them for me. Let your hand carry them away. Meanwhile, that prayer should have ended in the first minute it started. You mountain of house rent before me. In the name of Jesus Christ, move now. That should have ended that prayer. But that prayer persisted for hours upon hours. Not because prayer is being used right. But because ignorance has taken the better part of the prayer time. 
calling God to do what he assigned and left for you to do is a mistake. It's a spiritual mistake. I'm going to give you only 60 seconds. I want you to speak into the situations that are around you right now. I'm not asking you to beg God to see what he can do about it. I'm asking you to speak to it. Because you have the power of God in you. I give you only 60 seconds. If you need to walk away from your seat mate, you can. But please don't keep quiet. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Command that business to start. He's delaying too much. He's delaying too much. It has been in the planning phase for five years. Is it when you are 80, your business will start? business to become fruitful again why should you be going to business every day and there is no result let it become fruitful again let it become fruitful again command our marriage to become sweet again I know you you need to bind some devils but after you bind the devils, if you don't give a command, nothing changes. Because the devil will not change what is spoiled. Make some decrease over your life, over the week. Certain things should manifest. Last week you were disappointed. Will you allow things to go like that this week? No! Every closed door is now open. Every naughty issue is now loosed. Give you praise. You are going to come back with results, not disappointments. Results, results, results. That proposal will receive a favorable response. sickness to bow to the name of Jesus. Command that disease to die out of your system. Your body is not for sickness and infirmity. No! Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and thank him because it is done. it is done thank him thank him for his power that is at work on your behalf right now in the office in the hearts of men the power of God is at work on my behalf in systems government structures the power of God is at work on my behalf to the glory of God the Lord is my helper I will not fear, I will not be put to shame. The Lord is my helper. Thank you, Father. I give you the glory. Receive your victory testimony in the name of Jesus. You didn't say amen because you think I'm just trying to get an amen out of you. If only you know how the prophetic work. Receive your victory testimony in the name of Jesus. One more time. Receive your victory testimony in the name of Jesus. Receive your open door testimony in the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle job testimony in the name of Jesus. If you are saying this, amen, say it loud. In the name of Jesus. 
receive your marital breakthrough testimony in the name of Jesus. Receive your promotion testimony in the name of Jesus. I say receive your promotion testimony in the name of Jesus. Receive your marital settlement testimony in the name of Jesus. Receive your marital fruitfulness testimony in the name of Jesus. Let me hear that amen one more time. Thank you, Father. Lift your that right hand up, say, Jesus, I confess with my mouth, you are the Son of God. You shed your blood on the cross for the salvation of my soul. Today, I confidently confess, Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. My sins are forgiven. I am born again, washed in the blood of Jesus. I am a child of God in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the greatest testimony I've ever given. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Congratulations on eternal life. You will come back with testimonies. Please be seated. Let's wrap the service up quickly. Now, the moment you take your seat, the next thing we're doing in our church service uh, lineup is to worship with our offerings and tithe for those who believe, of course, in offering and tithe. In short of glory, we always say, you are not under obligation to participate in offering if you don't believe in offerings. It's okay to still enjoy the service and don't feel bad or guilty. We will not, nobody will harass you to give by force. In short of glory, we just teach our people it is a part of our spiritual act of worship and those who believe are encouraged 